In this video, I'm going to be breaking down a near near close flex money scheme that you can use in Madden 21 to have a lot of fun. I think this actually will be a very good scheme to be using in Madden 22 because I think that you're going to get a lot of momentum out of things like fullback dive and out of things like roll out corner. So um, this comes to us from the West Coast Playbook. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Cody, and my channel is focusing on helping people become the best Madden players that they can possibly become. And so if you want to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel, and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date with the latest tips and strategies right here on the YouTube channel. Now in this video, I am in the West Coast playbook, and if you want to get my uh, full West Coast offensive scheme, all you have to do is sign up for my uh, text message membership. It's something that is completely free to you, and all you have to do to sign up is simply text the word Madden to 208-218-6900 and I have a two-hour scheme breakdown on the far tight slot. We're talking about the near close flex, and so you can kind of combine these very good little two-back sets together to make a very good uh, little scheme. Now, first things out of the gate, I want to talk about the user rush that you're going to experience uh, from the 335 wide meta if you are going to run under center. I'm going to show you how to block it in this video. And then I'm also going to be going over kind of the base play for this offense, which is going to be uh, the play Texas. Uh, you could also do the play Smash, but uh, I like to play Texas out of this concept. So anyways, uh, real quick, my uh, coaching adjustments, 30, 10, and 10, kind of standard at this point in Mutt. And first thing I want to do is I want to show you the user rush. So uh, if you're playing, if you ever play under center for any length of time, you're going, I guarantee you, you're going to get this user rush, which basically what it's going to mean is they're going to sit kind of right there and they're going to try to run right through the middle and instantly sack you. What we want to do is we want to force them to have to get out of that by nature of our, you know, quick reads and quick concepts. So what I like to do um, is I'm going, you're going to see that I'm going to put... Uh, my running back on the right on a wheel route. I'm going to put the circle receiver on a flat. I'm going to put the X uh, receiver here on a post route. Whoops. I'm actually going to put the X on uh, a flat and then I'm going to put the circle on a post because um, I'm going to motion the circle receiver over. And then all I'm going to do is I'm simply going to block the fullback. Now you can put your tight end on a delay fade if you want to. Um, it, it's not necessary. Uh, you're still going to be able to pick this pressure up uh, with just blocking six. But uh, if you want to put your tight end on the delay fade, you certainly can. So I first want to show this just blocking six. And basically all we're going to do is we're going to ID the mic. And we're going to block the fullback. And then we're going to sh uh, slide protect to the side that the user is standing on. So in this example, the user is standing on the left. And so we're going to slide... Uh, or the user is standing on the right side, so we're gonna slide our line to the right. And with the snap of the ball, what you're gonna see is that same user rush, when I try to come in, is still going to come in, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, the one thing about under center is, that's where I would say like, you know, when you, the one thing this year about under center is occasionally, if they, it, they're still able to get this in uh, occasionally, but typically you're gonna be able to block that. I might have slid to the left by accident. So slide to the right, ID the mic, and at the snap of the ball, you're going to see that the fullback steps up and blocks it. Now, if you want to absolutely lock this, uh, lock this down as far as uh, pass protection, then all you simply have to do is go ahead and put your tight end on a delay fade, uh, which is really easy because it actually fits with the rest of the concept here. So we're going to put circle on a post. X is going to go on a flat. R1 is going to go on a wheel block the fullback, and then we're going to delay fade the tight end. Now, uh, I just want to show you the protection first, and uh, what you're going to see is I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to slide protect, I'm going to ID the mic, and I'm going to slide protect to the right. And at the snap of the ball, you should see we're going to get pretty clean pocket here. See how the pocket clears up, and we're able to have a second to be able to make a read. So now that you've picked up the pressure, I want to show you the actual... Uh, routes on this now real quick this um, whoops I'm on the wrong controller the the setup for the the, uh, the the setup for the under center so just cover this real quick so if I set this pressure up and I try to do this to the other side 
you'll find that the pressure is a lot less consistent when they shift this side. And I will tell you that typically, uh, typically speaking, they have to be on this side to stop the run. But you're going to see here that the pressure is a lot less consistent. Now, again, they can get in that pocket and they can really mess some things up for you. So what we want to do ideally is we want to be rolling out on most of our plays. And so an easy way to do that is you're going to see that they're going to do, if they know what they're doing defensively, you're going to see that they're going to basically do this, which is going, uh, essentially they're going to move this, this backer out, if I can get him to move out, kind of like right there. And the idea is that this is going to stop the, um, the rollout. Well, the cool part about this offense is you have this ability to double team the nose tackle and then I can ID whoever I want on that outside so that my running back is going to pick him up. And then I can basically do something like this right here. And at the snap of the ball, you'll see that we're going to get this nice cut block. And I can roll out and throw throw whatever route I want to throw. Okay? So that's kind of like a little bit of uh, overview of the formation. Now, let's talk about the first concept. Uh, if their user are rushing you a lot, I want to just give you a concept that is really good against the blitz. And that's the flat... Um, the flat, the wheel, and then the post. So you'll see something, essentially, and then the delay fade, of course. So we slide left, we have the delay fade, and basically all we're going to do is at the snap of the ball, we are going to be reading to the right side, and nine times out of ten, the running back is going to come wide open on the underneath, just like that. So if we see them in flat coverage to the back side, then we can easily just throw the running back route. Now, what, they'll, what they will start doing is they will start manning the running back up. So they'll take the slot off that left side and they'll basically say, you know, you're not gonna throw the ball to the running back, we're gonna man the running back up. Well, this is where we have some really good concepts off of this. So you're gonna see here that circle is gonna be on the post, X is on the fade or the little flat. And what you'll see is when you actually peek over to the right, you're gonna see that there's nobody over here on the X. So I can just take the X and easily you know be able to get a feel the other thing that you have going for you um, is remember for them to user rush you their user has to blitz which means there's going to be nobody in the middle of the field so they have to come like right down here now i want to be clear they can fake rush and come back to the middle of the field so don't think for a second that you know you don't you don't you got to make an educated read you can't just force stuff and that's why, honestly, that is why we really like to put this tight end on a delay fade. So what we've got here is we're going to ID, slide to the left, six-man blitz. We've got a seven-man protection on. And now what we can do is we could actually smart route this corner, and then we could put the post out here as well if we wanted to do something like this. And what you're going to see is now we're going to have a lot of – we want to snap that right when he moves over – but now the whole middle of the field is open for this post to be able to work. So they have to user that post route. They can't not user it, which is really, really cool. So then if we if we kind of think this play out, and let's just say for sake of example that they um, what for whatever reason they're able to cover um, they're able to cover this this post, which I highly doubt that they're gonna be able to, but let's just say they do something like a cross man and it just so happens to take it away and they're you know, setting up their, their heavy user rush with these contains, they're blitzing everybody in the middle, and what do we do? Well, this is where I really like um, to use the double team component. So we set up our basic protection, but because we're running a seven man protection, we can afford to double team the most outside guy on the near close. Now the cool part about this double team is it tends to actually work really well from under center a lot better than it does from shotgun. So you're going to see we're going to get this double team on the furthest most outside guy. And then at the snap of the ball, we can just basically, um, obviously we can take our check downs and all of that other stuff. The other thing that we can do, though, is we can check into our delay fade. So um, let me show you that one more time here. So uh, all I'm doing is I'm setting up heavy pressure. I'm going to try to user rush through the middle. And then you're going to see that we're going to double team this outside linebacker. Now, I want to I want to give you like a really good example of them basically taking that linebacker and moving him outside so that we can't double team him. So, you're going to see here that I'm containing and they're going to move this guy all the way out here. And I just want to show you the pass protection from under center. It's really something so I can double team all the way over to this guy even though this guy's in pass coverage. 
It's one of the beauties of this, this setup. So then when I come to do this, you see I get this, this chop block and then I can have an opportunity to try to get out of the pocket. Now obviously in MUT, you're gonna have escape artists. It's gonna be a little bit easier. But the gist of what I'm trying to show you is once you've, once you've picked up the pressure, um, which again, I would get it like right there early before they can, you know, before they can, you know, move him manually. But once you've picked up the pressure, then what you're going to see is this tight end rollout delay fade is gonna be really, really good. So I'm gonna sit, make my initial read. Okay, don't like what I see, so I'm gonna roll out and then I can hit the post. The other thing though that I can do, and the sheds in practice mode are just crazy. Um, if, you can, if you can pick up the blitz in practice mode, you can pick it up in, in game, trust me. But you're gonna see the other thing that I'm going to do here is we're gonna get that double team. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll out and I'm gonna try to hit my delay fade across the field. So it's gonna look something like this. And then I just start rolling out and I can release the delay fade in the middle of the field. Now, of course, the shed's got me and everything, but when, if you can get out of the pocket uh, to do this, this is really, really good. And you can roll out on both sides. You don't have to just roll out on the other side. So now, obviously by then, if you've picked up their user, he's gonna get back into coverage. But if they, you know, again, it's just something that's nice to know, like, and you could, honestly, it probably makes a little bit more sense to put your tight end on a delay drag as opposed to a um, anything else. So you'll see here, double team, and then we'll just roll out here. And of course I can't get the stupid, I can't get the, the shed D to be, to, to not go crazy, but you see we're able to pick up the blitz. Um, but basically once their users died, if they're use, let's just assume that their user goes to the post route, okay? Let's just assume for whatever, you know, their user goes to the post route. Well, then what you can do is you can hit this delay fade. So pick up the initial pressure. Okay, we picked it up. Release the delay fade. And that's that's what, I, or the delay drag. And that's what we're looking for. Now, the beauty of this delay drag is one of the other tactics that people will use out of this offense is they'll play like a pretty aggressive press man. So if you're if you're getting a lot of man to man, um, where they're blitzing everybody and sending man, then do this same setup. The only difference is you want to put the X, like leave the X on his corner route, and you're gonna get this look right here. And why I like this is because the X, especially if I had Chris Godwin where the X receiver is, the X is gonna almost always beat man to man. Now most of the time they're not going to. Uh, most of the time they're not going to press you out of this offense because they know that if they do that, there's a lot of things that you could do like out and ups and different things. So I wouldn't say they're going to press you, but what you'll see is we still have our, our flat wheel concept with the corner, but now, um, we've got this nice post route that's going to be able to beat man. So your corner beats man and your post route, um, is going to beat man. And then your running backs not. But just take a look at who's guarding the running back. You see it's the safety on this left side. So um, if I wanted to, if I knew they were in main coverage, uh, I could run something like this right here and just throw the wheel. So you see I can just get the ball out quick. The trick with like near close flex and any under center offense, in my opinion, is you have to master the art of the quick pass. You really do. Um, there are people, if, if, if they know what they're doing in under center defense, they're going to blitz the crap out of you. I guarantee it. Um, everything is in compressed out of this set, and it's just a perfect thing to, way to defend this. So if you can master this, uh, these quick throws, that's going to be huge. That is going to be absolutely critical uh, for your offense. Uh, let me flip this play real quick just to show you. So this is what I was talking about with Godwin. Um, so another little trick you can do is if they're blitzing you a lot, you can always flip your play. Now, again, you know, they could do something like this, but you notice that I'm man aligning and pressing and it doesn't move anybody. So this is another little, just a little secret uh, to this formation. So what you can do is you can put your running back on a table route and then just quickly throw it right at the snap and get easy yardage against really any defense. You can do the same thing with the wheel route. The table route just gets up field a little bit better, uh, in my opinion. But the other thing that you can do with this, and the other thing that I wanted to show is this is why, um, this is why I like to put, um, 
This is why I like to put Chris Godwin in this slot receiver position because if we run the same concept where we have basically this right here, you're going to see that Chris Godwin, when we motion out of this, Chris Godwin, because he has slotomatic, is going to get a lot more separation on the side than Mike Evans was able to. So now the other thing I, I really want to stress is you really want to run with your twins receivers to the wide side of the field. It's like really, really important that you do that. So you see here, I just flip the play. The cool part about this formation is you can also snap the ball like really, really quickly if you want to. So, you know, if I wanted to snap the ball right there, I could, but obviously we're gonna set up our protection. You see right here. So I just want you to watch circle though. And you'll see that he gets this nice, um, nice separation opportunity. Now, typically what they're going to do just, just kind of a, an FYI is when you f when you flip the formation. So like when you go into this set right here, and I'm just gonna set up the route so I don't mess up here. But what they're gonna do is whenever you motion uh, this guy, take a look at the defense. You see that the defense doesn't move. Um, if they man align, they don't. Nobody moves. You see this? I'm man aligning. It's not letting me go. So a simple thing that you can do to kind of get around this is you can also do things like put circle on a crossing route because he's got a ton of inside positioning. So as you see there, you can put him on a crosser and, and run that as well. So those are just some little tricks uh, from, this, from this formation. But all in all, that's how you pick up the user rush. It's kind of the most important thing that you need to be aware of. So like if they're sending heavy pressure at you and Let's say they're running a lot of more man coverage than they are zone coverage. If you if you leverage the power of this table route, um, I just don't think you're going to be disappointed. This little quick throw right here, really easy, get outside and go. If their user rushing you all the time, this is a really good um, this is a really good element. The other thing, real quick, about that table route is if they you see here that I've got the slot corner and a hard flat basically. So if I throw this uh, if I throw this table route at this hard flat and then I just instantly truck up field or do a move, you see it kind of glitches them out. So those are little things that you can do that will help beat the blitz. Uh, the other thing that you can do real quick about the blitz, the smash concept is really a good play to talk the, through this through with, is I set my protection up, right? Um, and then all I'm going to do, and I probably would delay for the tight end, is put it, leave this hitch right here so the flat gets pulled and I can throw the hitch. So this offense is a lot of fun. It really is. But you have to understand pass protection. You have to understand quick throws. You have to understand how all of that works. Because if you don't, you're going to get you're going to get blitzed out of the gym. I, I'm just telling you right now, this is how people defend this formation. 100%. They will blitz you and they will blitz the living daylights out of you until you don't want to be blitzed anymore. And so the really important thing that you have to master is like something like this Texas play, right? Another good example. So we have we have uh, seven man protection, and all we're going to do is we're going to um, motion circle outside. He's going to take all the flats with him, uh, and then you've got this Texas route coming underneath. So um, you know that's really the thing is you have to understand pass protection, and you have to understand the pressure that they can send, so that you can pick it up and then you can easily dot your opponent. So thanks for watching. And if you want to get my full West Coast Offensive Guide, you can get that for free by texting me. My number is 208-218-6900.